Hey, what's up, gamers? Skelmostick. Due to the number of requests that I have had for help with the Balanced Deckiversary run, I've decided to go ahead and throw this video guide together on how to do all four stages of the Deckiversary run. Stage one and two, to be honest, aren't that hard, but there's always those people that have some trouble with uh, deck building concepts and what to do and when to do it and stuff like that, especially newer players. So I'm going to go ahead and run through all four stages of the Balanced Deckiversary run and let you all see it. If it turns out to be too long of a video, then I'll put the first two stages in one video and the next two stages in another video, just in case. I don't want you all to have to sit through a three hour long video on Balanced Deckiversary. The problem with Balanced Deckiversary that people are having is the fact that, well, it's balanced and there is no 80% shields against the damage that you're going to take here. The best you can do is use uh, TC Tower Shields for 55%. For some reason, that difference in percentage is giving people a problem in the later stages. I'm going to go ahead and run through this as to what I do, what I'm starting with, what I have, and hopefully help you guys out to get what you need to do here. All right, first things first. What I have, what my setup is, what's going on. I have... The deck, the, the balanced Catholic deck four, simply because I've already run through this enough times to craft it. You can start with whatever school deck that you have from previous engagements that gives you extra damage. That's really what you need to work with. Any of the other deck anniversary decks that you have that gives your school, your school, your class extra damage will help you out. As soon as you can, as soon as you get the fir the first le levels done. Then craft the balance, the Catholic's deck, if it's one that helps you out. It happens to be, let me go to it. It happens to be one that helps out my school for this, which is, I'm running this on the death school. So it happens to be one that helps me out. If you've got a fire school or if you've got a storm school or whatever, any one of the elemental schools, then use that deck appropriately. It won't give you the balance damage, you know, the balance resistance that you see here. It won't give you that extra bonus, but you'll at least have the extra damage. Any extra thing that you can get, being as this is a no gear engagement, except for your deck, being as this is a no gear engagement, anything bonus that you can get will help you out. Along those lines, especially for all the decathlon events, I have crafted my own pet. I mixed my own pet, especially for this. And that is, oh, here, let me put the little pet itself. That is this pet here, Quint Heels pet. This pet, at times she won't help you, but for the most part, she does not like scorpions being cast. And any times they cast a scorpion, she'll heal. Sprightly, fairy queen, uh, fairy friend, I'm sorry, fairy friend, sprite queen, energizing battle unicorn. I don't have Batusi on this because I think Batusi is like, like the least useful healing spell. Anyhow, I have crafted a Quint Heals pet just to help me in this decathlon because I really don't have a healing school. You can add fairy spells if you want into your treasure card deck, but... That's the thing about this. Anytime you're doing this, you're using pips. Every spell you cast uses pips, and you don't really have that many pips to start with. So if you can get some outside help with heals, by all means, do that. That's what I did here, and you'll find out that this is really gonna help me out in this. Let me show you uh, on, my, on my deck setup what I've got for cards. I have the deck four, which means it has extra, extra slots for treasure cards. If you have the deck one, it'll give you about half of this, and you'll have to plan your deck accordingly. This is about the percentages you want, to run through this on any stage, one, two, three, or four. If you're running stage one, you'll want about five, four or five tower shields, and maybe three blades. You'll reduce it, of course, depending on what level of deck you've got. Let me see if I uh, happen to have a deck one here. Yeah, I do, there you go. I'm gonna show you this just for a minute so you can see what slots there are. So you're working with that on a deck one. So of course you'll have to reduce the number of cards you got. You wanna have, on a deck one, you probably wanna have four ghouls and four vampires if you're using death, or of course, your appropriate spells, whatever school you may have. You'll want to have those shields in there. You're going to need those shields in there because they're going to reduce that health greatly on you. Okay, let me go ahead and go back to this. <laughs> we'll let that life build back up. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and get into this and make these runs for you. All right, let's see, we've got stage one here. Okay, we're just, like I said, we're going to start out with stage one and just go for it. Stage one will give you a desert crawler. No, not that, not that big of a deal. 
If you've got your decathlon deck that gives you extra damage, you're really ready to go. You can just pop this guy off right off the bat. Ordinarily, uh, and I'll show you this one after you get to the higher stages. Ordinarily, you'll start out with a tower shield because they've already got pips. But on stage one and pretty much stage two, you won't have to do that. If you can get a hit right away and knock them off without getting hurt, then by all means do that. Okay, I have death room. Going up to the next level, next floor. One of the key things I can tell you about all these stages, no matter what they are, it is very important. See, I got two players here, and one of them is going to hit me, and I don't want to take damage if I can avoid it. So first thing I'm going to do is pop a tower shield. Anyhow, as I was saying, one of the most important things that you can do to win the decathlon here is know what your damage is. In other words, with me and uh, Ghoul and Vampire, I know what my Vampire will hit for. I'm going to hit the same every time. I know what it will hit for by itself. I know what it will hit for with just a blade on it. I know what it will hit for with a blade and a feint on it or just a feint. Know what damage you're going to do to know for sure if you're going to be able to kill off the opponent with that hit. Or if, you're, or if, you, if you can actually manage to kill off the opponent with just an extra blade, then do that, etc. Your goal here is to try to build up to one hit kill these things as quick as possible, just like any other match in the game. Okay, he's going to hit me. And I should get healed. She usually heals on a scorpion. Sometimes she gets picky and doesn't, but a lot of times she will. Okay, she's not going to do it this time. There are times she'll heal three times in a row just to do that. Okay, he's got 210. I know that a ghoul won't hit by itself won't hit for 210. So I'll go ahead and throw another tower shield on and bide my time. I'll throw this on because it costs me no pips. And then next turn I'll throw on a blade because it costs me no pips and I'll be building pips while I'm actually taking actions. That's really important. Building pips is everything in these matches. Not taking a damage reduction. Again, that's the, probably the second most important thing in these matches, damage reduction. You need to be reducing damage while you're building pips to make this a, a, winning, a winning situation. Okay, there we go. Took a zero, I took a zero. I don't know how it's zero, but I took a zero on it. Okay, I'm ready to go with a blade and a vampire and that's gonna do, I believe, 603, I think it is. Oh, 610. Okay, I've gone up a little bit. 610. It was 603 on the, on the rank 3 deck. Okay. Now, balance room and a special event point. As you know from this decathlon, if you've done it already, for the first match is a single uh, opponent, then you have a double opponent. That's really the sticking point for all these levels is the double opponent things because they're based, they're simply building more pips than you are. Flips McNulty. Okay, he's got 240. I'm going to do the same thing, really easy peasy. Most of you, like I said, stage one, stage two is no big deal. Go ahead and throw down my shield. And go ahead and throw down my blade while I'm taking my extra pip. Same thing as I was saying or, uh, before I started this match. You're seeing me play this on death, but pretty much the same thing applies no matter what school you're using. Pretty much the same tactics and techniques apply. But you'll be using your four pip spells and your two pip spells to get this done. The reason I'm using death on this is that extra advantage of getting heals while you're hitting. I, I, would, I find this to be a little bit tougher using any other school simply because while well, you're making your hits and that's fine and it costs you less pip to make those hits. But if you're taking damage and your pet's not healing, you're in trouble. So if you have a death, really honestly, I recommend using a death to do decathlons. Okay, that is the end of stage one. I, I don't think I even took a hit. Maybe, maybe one or two. Maybe one or two hits, but no real damage. Okay, let me go back down to the lobby and we will start up stage two. Okay, I'm back here again. 
Run right in there and not wait for stage two. This time we're going up a little bit higher, of course, in the opponent toughnesses. Toughnesses, is that a word? Toughnesses. Okay, this guy's 290, which means I can't kill him with a ghoul. Well, the tower shield. Uh, you didn't see me, by the way, refresh my treasure cards, and that was a mistake. But you really want to refresh, remember to refresh your treasure cards after every match, or after every uh, level that you go through. I forgot to do it, getting in a hurry here, but I should be able to make it through stage two, no problem, anyway. Go ahead and do this. I have my stage four deck on, so I have plenty of tower shields to start with. I should be able to do this. If you have a stage one or stage two deck, you cannot afford to forget to restack your treasure cards. So yeah, that was one big fat error I made. She is not wanting to heal today. The other day she was all about it, but not today. Okay, 290, which is plenty enough with, the, with that vampire to beat that guy down. I couldn't have done that if I'd been on stage three and stage four. I could not have forgotten to put my treasure cards in there. I would have been in trouble for doing that. Stage one and stage two, not so bad. Balance ring, okay. This is going to be the real sticker here because of the treasure card thing. I should be able to do it. This guy's going to be 290. I think this one's going to be a little bit more. Yeah, 320. Ah, let's see. There's my shield, which is a wonderful thing. <clears throat> this time I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I'll probably use my faint with a ghoul to get my 290 because I wanna hit and kill with like the lower uh, denomination hits first. The reason that for that being you want to leave each match with as much health as humanly possible. And if you hit with a ghoul, it gives you back less health than if you hit with a vampire. So here goes this. That's not going to be bad. And what I mean by that is if you're, if you're really low on health and you finish off the match, but, you're, but you're, you didn't fill your health back up, you're going to be in trouble. You, you just are. So I'll hit with my lower, my lower hit first. Get him out of there. That'll be enough to kill him off. Plus, it'll have me a couple extra pips. Plus, it will allow me to hit with a vampire next turn, kill this guy off, and fill up my life. What you do is just as important as when you do it. When you do it is just as important as what you do. So in here, hitting is important, but when and what you hit with but it's, it's kind of more important. All right, so okay, I'll go ahead and throw another tower shield up here because I've got a couple extra tower shields and I know I can finish this. I'll go ahead and throw my extra tower shield just, just to not take any damage. I could live the two turns and not use my tower shield, but if I've got it and I don't have to have it for later on, it's cool. I'm still waiting for her to get mad and start healing. The other day I was making this run and boy, she was mad and healing like every hit. <laughs> Okay, so he's got me blasted off, but he's only got one pip. Go ahead and throw my blade up. And this will give me enough to finish the job right there. fill me up all the way. See, now if I had hit with a ghoul, I wouldn't have filled up my life all the way. Here we go. And even though a ghoul with a faint on it would have killed him off, yeah, much better to do it this way. We got there, we got the mouse. Jarlath, true grip, okay. And... He's got 360, which is really no problem. 
Come up with that. Uh, use that. Try to draw. I'm trying to drop a shield. There we go. Straight shield. You always want a shield if, if you're, you know you're going to be taking a hit. You always want a shield at the beginning of the match because that's when they're, they have the most pips. They don't have to wait to pip back up again to hit you. Make sure you're shielded right at the beginning. <coughs> Excuse me. And I am good to go. That's enough to finish him off. And that is the end of stage two. Oh, okay. Or I'll fizzle and that's, that doesn't happen very often. Or I'll fizzle and not get my hit. Never mind. Let's go again. Okay, 115. Not so bad. We've got another hit anyway. That's the, also the beauty of this whole decathlon thing. You're using treasure cards. So even if you fizzle a hit... The card's not truly gone. You can discard and draw back up that card that you lost. If you say you, you have like one war elephant and you cast it and you fizzle, it's not like a normal deck where you have to reshuffle to get it. You can just draw through your treasure cards until you pick it back up again. Okay, and that is the end of stage two. Now, I've already picked up all the recipes here, so we're not really worried about that too, too, too altogether much. Okay, guys, sorry, I needed to get a, to uh, take a thumbnail for a, for a screenshot for a thumbnail there. That is going to be the end of the video. I do not want to make this a 30-minute video, so I'm, I am going to cut this into two parts. Guys, that is stage one, stage two. Deck setup, pet setup, everything you need to know for the balanced decathlon in the first couple of stages. I'm going to go ahead and do the next two stages in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out at all, please like, subscribe, share. Yell my name to the heavens. Name your firstborn son or daughter. Scale is pretty good for either one. I really think that it is. After me, because I would love to have that. And until next time, this is Scala Mystic reminding you that whatever else you do, always love the game. Peace.